Okay, hopefully the example of CRF gives you a better example of how the brain, which is made of the hypothalamus and the pituitary, communicates with the rest of the body. I thought of that analogy of the hypothalamus being the president on a whim, but hopefully that gave you a better picture of how everything works. Let's run through another quick example. So the hypothalamus releases another hormone, which we call TRH, thyroid releasing hormone which is just like CRF, except TRH is going to act on TSH, which is produced by the anterior pituitary. And that stands for thyroid stimulating hormone. So basically, the hypothalamus is the president, sent the TRH messenger all the way cross country on a train, which we can relate to the blood. The train is what flows across country just like the blood flows through our body and it's going to reach let's say Texas this time and Texas T for thyroid so the thyroid gland it's going to reach the thyroid gland and that is where we get the production of our thyroid hormones T3 and T4 so that's how our message is relayed from the brain all the way to the next system which is the anterior pituitary and then all the way finally to say another gland like the thyroid gland. Now I said earlier that all seven of these hormones are stimulating except for one and that is prolactin. So prolactin is the oddball of the bunch. So prolactin is actually inhibited by the hormone that the hypothalamus secretes which is its pair called PIF. So the hypothalamus always secretes a hormone which is paired with a hormone from the anterior pituitary. We said CRF is paired with ACTH. I said TRH was paired with TSH. And the hypothalamus also produces another one called PIF. And that is paired with prolactin. So as long as the hypothalamus is secreting this PIF, prolactin will not be produced. So that's the opposite effect that you've seen from before. Now if something were to occur to disturb the PIF release, so say for example it wasn't released anymore, then um, something that could happen that would occur that would cause this would be say a tumor. So if PIF was not released anymore, then prolactin will continue to be released. So the opposite occurs. And fun fact, in males this can actually result in lactation or galactorrhea, which is when these patients present those types of symptoms to doctors. So that means there's a hormonal imbalance in their system with the PIF and prolactin hormones. Okay, before we get into specific hormones, we need to talk about two categories of hormones. The first is the peptide mechanism of hormone action. So peptides are charged molecules that are made up of amino acids. So they cannot cross this lipid bilayer, which is what all of our cells are made out of, are the cell membrane. So since they cannot cross this, they have to attach to some sort of receptor, a protein receptor, that is located throughout the cell membrane, intramembranously, label this R. So the hormone has to bind to it extracellularly, just like that. And once this hormone binds to the receptor, it's going to activate a protein inside of the cell called a G protein. And we know a G protein is activated when it produces GTP. So once the G protein is activated, it's going to go on to bind to yet another protein inside this membrane called adenylate cyclase. So this G protein is going to travel across and bind right there, bind to the AC. And once it binds, it's going to cause the ATP, which is a source of energy from our cellular respiration, to produce 
a messenger, which we would call CAMP. Now this is occurring throughout the cell membrane. Multiple hormones are mul binding to multiple receptors. So multiple CAMPs are being produced throughout the cell membrane or inside the cell. So once the CAMP is activated, it's going to go on and further cause other proteins inside of the cell to be activated called kinases. So these other proteins called kinases will be activated. And the reason there's multiple of them is because there's a signal cascade. The CMP is producing multiple effects. And once these kinases are activated, that's when we get our hormones to be produced or inhibited. Now, one hormone is able to produce a huge effect in what we call a signal cascade. Now, the best way that I like to remember this is think of a peptide. So the word tide at the end. Think of a tidal wave. So the peptide mechanism is like a tidal wave effect because one hormone will signal a few proteins to be activated, right over here, a few G proteins to be activated or a few ACs to be activated, which will then produce multiple CAMPs to build up throughout the cell. And finally, a huge cascade of hormone release. So all of these hormones will finally be built up and released and come crashing out of the cell. So the peptide mechanism is really fast working but short lived because it works through a secondary me messenger system which we can call the CAMP. So depending on whether the first messenger, the hormone, is present or not, multiple secondary messengers can be activated to easily turn the system on or off. Two hormones that work through this type of mechanism are insulin and ADH. The second mechanism to know is steroid action. So two types of steroids are actually aldosterone and estrogen or even any of the other sex hormones. So these hormones, unlike their peptide counterparts, are easily able to pass through the cell membrane. So let's draw our cell out. And here is the nucleus. So these hormones, since they're nonpolar, are able to pass right through the cell membrane into the cell and can even pass through the nuclear membrane. And this is where they are met with their receptors, which are located in the nucleus. So the hormones bind and once the hormone receptor complex forms, something that we call dimerization occurs when two complexes bind together to form a dimer. Once that occurs, these dimers can go on to bind to the DNA inside of the cell. And this is where the change begins to occur because as soon as this dimerization occurs and they bind to the DNA, the process that we call transcription changes. And transcription occurs when we go from our DNA to our mRNA. So if that's altered, then translation is also altered. And translation is when we go from our mRNA to our proteins. So the amount of proteins are being altered as well. So steroid hormones are longer lived, but they also take longer to see the effects because they alter the amount of mRNA in the cell. So steroid hormones get right to the core, the core of our cells, which is our DNA.